Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Randy Richard in the shop. So I finally uh, did part two for the dovetail cutter. A lot of interruptions in it, so it's kind of, hopefully it's a pretty good video. Uh, I tried to explain things and everything I showed, everything I did. So here's the cutter, but thanks a lot. Uh, finally got it done. Um, Let's see uh, what's going to be next on the list. Uh, I'm not real sure right now. Um, I'm getting the feet done. I got four feet done, and I'll show you those real quick uh, for the lance lay. I'm going to two more to do, and we'll get it a little hot. Get the, this just to raise the lathe up and uh, another two and a half inches or so. See how that works out for me. Other than that, that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, we'll get this video going to you. Uh, enjoy. Okay, guys, this is like uh, my third or fourth attempt to, to try to film this. I keep having issues, so we're going to try it again. This is part two of the dovetail cutter. So first off, um, I got some uh, feet, got four of the feet done for my lathe, riser feet. I'm going to put up under these there, it was about it was just under three inches. Or uh, actually, it's three inch stock, I turned down a little bit. But I got four of them done. Two more to do. Uh, hopefully get those done today too. And then I'll be able to get my lathe, uh, the lance lathe up a little higher. A little easier to work with. So we'll move those out of the way. Another, another quick thing I'll show you. This is kind of a binder I've kind of put together some, for some quick reference in the, in the shop here. If I, you know, to look up stuff, yeah, things like that. So I got the old DRO instruction manual for the mill, the quick cheat sheet. Here's a thread and tap drill chart. Covers pretty much everything. It gives you a close fit, the free fits. 50% thread, 75% thread tap uh, drill sizes. Um, your minor diameters, uh, pitches. All the way up to one inch from zero, from a number zero to one inch. And then I have, you know, carbide uh, information, some socket hits, cap screw uh, info as far as the counterboards, clearance drills, standard sizes for that stuff. Uh, well, here's a Starrett thread chart. This is another thread chart that shows you uh, UN and Whitworth's. Also, in deep three double depth, these are the double depth of the threads. So it makes it kind of quick and easy if you're tapping, or cutting threads on a lathe. Here's a inch per minute feed rate chart I made, um, timing and measuring the feed on my x axis for my mill. So I made this chart up real quick uh, with reference to the number setting on the dial. It's pretty good, gives me an idea. Some uh, steel information, machinability chart information, some other uh, machinability ratings of steel, things like that. Some th more threads information. Oh, some. These are some. Uh, this is kind of good. These. This is like the standard back of a dial. Now these are set. These, these are these are standards. The industry follows. So if you want to need to know the lugs and all that and it's offset, you can uh, you know use that to make up stuff. Um, what else? Oh here's Morris tapers, your sizes. This is another chart. These are instrument chart hole sizes for aircraft. You see they're all standardized. So you can get that kind of information. I got a uh, Information on a bunch of aluminum, uh, insert stuff, dropping stuff, a lot of insert information. There's tons of stuff there. So, stuff on the inverter for the quick reference guide for the inverter, uh, or the I should say the VFD for the mill. So, anyway. Probably some more stuff over here. So, a metric, a metric charts here. 
Anyway, so this is kind of handy. Dropped everything. Here's that spec sheet on those bolts I used to make the dovetail cutter. So, anyway, just, that was just, just a quickie over here on the land slave making that, uh, next, that dovetail cutter so I can film that part two, the milling part of it. Uh, I thought I'd shoot just a little bit of video of making some cuts on it here. Pro Molly 4130. Things pretty hot. Nice finish though. So yeah, so I'm going to turn that down to 5.8, 625. And then I'm going to make the uh, dovetail part. So I'm doing this all in one shot. So it's perfectly concentric. Then I'll cut off this uh, 12 point, uh, it's not a hex head, but it's a, it's a 12 point uh, uh, socket head on it so we'll whack that off but I'm going to turn the whole thing in one shot so it's just perfectly concentric final dovetail uh, cut I believe it's just final cut on the dovetail cutter here let's get this cleaned up right here on the angled part Chips everywhere. So it came out pretty nice. A little funny finish there, but I'm going to give a little bit of polish anyway. So there it is. And uh, I got a machine off the end. Clear, uh, I'll machine off this all this end to clear up to this, this uh, break here. I'll just leave uh, 20 or 30 thousandths there on that break so I can kind of round that, radius that a little bit. So, there it is. Uh, I'll probably put a little chamfer on there before I take it out. So Then we'll do the milling. Okay, so this is actually take two. We're gonna do this, show this setup all over again here. <laughs> or I feel gonna film it again. So what I'm using is a Starrett Protractor here. Actually one from my grandfather. His name's engraved in it. Scale and the protractor. So I got it set at 30 degrees. And I'm gonna set up the base. I don't know if I think you see it, Rube. Real easy, just uh, right there, 30 degrees. Snug it with my fingers a little bit. A little more with the wrench.
we're going to use the DRO to do this. So I'm going to select the incline tool. My angle is going to be minus 60. It's all right. I already have it in there, but it will do minus 60. That's wrong. Minus 30. Minus 30. There we go. Okay. Now it says zero, zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust, bring this in to, now I'm about center line. You can be anywhere on there. We're just going to go across the face. The more distance you have, probably the more accurate it is, but this is uh, a little more, almost an inch, it's a 1.206 or something or eight. But it, it really doesn't matter. So we're going to bring it in until the dial indicator has, has a little tension on it. We're going to bring it in to read zero. Then we're going to hit X zero. That's zeros and both out. Now we're going to move to the other side of your piece. Like I said, it doesn't matter where, just as long as it's somewhere over there. And we're going to move till that Y axis says zero on the DRO. Zero. Then we're going to read the dial indicator. It says zero. And that's what we really wanted to say. That is truly amazing. And all I did was set it with the protractor. Uh, usually you're at least a thousandth or two off. That is outstanding. Um, usually uh, you're going to see an error. If the DRO is on zero, you're going to see an error, plus or minus, uh, you know, within a few thousands. Um, this is the first time I think I've ever had it come out like this where I set it and it. It's on zero. Uh, so we don't need to move it. Uh, otherwise, I'd be going back and forth. I'd go back to the other side, reset it for zero on the dial, reset it for zero and on the DRO, come back over here, and then I would have to rotate it a little bit. I guess I could do that for demonstration purposes. I don't want to. It's perfect. The object is to make the tool. And I tightened it up, it might be off a touch. Let's do that, then let's do that again. Just to double check it. I'll bring it to zero. I'll zero the DRO, and we'll go to the other side. We'll zero on the DRO, and it's exactly zero on the dial. Well, that was probably worst demo ever uh, but the object here is to make the tool uh, we'll chalk it up for dumb luck uh, I, but you know I've used that protractor many times on things and uh, I've even checked it with the uh, with a sign bar and you know what when you if you line up those lines on there it is right on I'm amazed uh, how accurate the uh, protractor really is yeah this thing is uh, I'll do it one more time here just since I snugged it a little more but zero and well, we're touch touch off but you know a few couple tenths it looks like after snugging it that's okay
it, it doesn't need to be that uh, accurate. Um, I mean, it needs to be accurate, but not uh, a, a tenth or two is not going to mean anything because it's a mounting for the insert. Uh, the insert is going to set your uh, well. It does mount against the edge there, and uh, I, milling it, it 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 could be off by some too when you mill it. So. Um, I'm okay with a tenth or two. Of course, it always can be me too sometimes. Zero, well, zero and zero. So we're good. We'll get set up to mill it.